Olga Barry is my guest today, and everyone will know that she is the artistic director of the Kilkenny Arts Festival. In these ever-changing times, Olga has imagined and reimagined and probably reimagined again 10 days of performances and exhibitions, and the ICO are, of course, part of this festival in a reimagined way. Olga, hello, how are you doing? Hi, Matthew, how are you? I'm okay, how's it all going there? It's good, it's exciting. We have a lot of tickets on sale already and we have some more announcements to make. So we're again, not unlike last year, relieved to have gotten to this point and have a festival we can be proud of. Well done, I'm extremely pleased to hear that. Now, before we talk about the ICO and the Roisin Reimagined project, can I ask, how on earth do you keep all these plates spinning right up until the very last minute? Uh, partners. <laughs> Okay. Um, amazing partners, an amazing team, an amazing willingness for people to get back in the same space or room with audiences to make new work. I think you'll notice from this year's programme that it, it is a response to COVID, but we've, we're celebrating the city and we're celebrating new work and new ways of working with really key partners. People like the ICO, the great Jerry Keane and the whole team there, the players. Um, also with our theatre partners, uh, Rough Magic, also with Irish National Opera, who you, Irish Chamber Orchestra have worked so well with in so many projects, imagining an outdoor uh, performance of Electra for Ireland, and installations that also have elements of live music and theatricality on a construction site or in a skate park. So it's about all of those core elemental things to Kilkenny, which are about the artists and the audiences being together, celebrating the city, and stepping into new ground artistically. The ICO have been part of the festival for, God, quite a long time now, I guess. And we really look forward to it every year as it's something really special and it's, it's a kind of intimate part of our annual calendar. And I was talking to Vanessa Sweeney, Nikki Sweeney's mother, on last week's Oboe interview, and she was telling me how emotional she found last year's concert for both the audience and the orchestra. And I'm kind of wondering, what does the ICO's residency mean for the festival in a kind of broader emotional sense? And you know something, gosh, that's so great to hear because we always knew the ICO was a huge, massive piece of development for Kilkenny Arts Festival to have an orchestra in residence, to have such a brilliant orchestra, but one that kind of thought like us, that doesn't think of music as a dead thing. You know, the joy of the ICO, when you watch, if there was no audio, you know, if there was no sound and you watched the ICO, you would know they were having a blast, even in the most serious repertoire. It's exactly the kind of orchestra I love to watch and, and listen to. And last year, I saw some of our quite hardened technical production crew doing this behind the castle wall, behind the scenes at Soundcheck, because just the positivity of hearing that live Orchestra, orchestral sound for the first time in six months last year and then we got to see the audience have it so if there was never any doubt for us here of how intrinsic and how much of a building block the Irish Chamber Orchestra as an orchestra in residence as an artistic partner has meant for Kilkenny all of the repertoire we've been able to do with Jorg all of the things we've been able to do with new music in, with Sam Perkin for example the things we've been able to do with um, the ICO premiering work that is commissioned for a theatrical piece, for example, threading the orchestra into the innards of the festival brings a real connection to the to the audience that gets to see the orchestra in different contexts. And what we've seen is people feeling like it's their orchestra. And last summer, when we were back in that outdoor space and we got to see the audience, you know, the reaction that we had had three hours earlier on Soundcheck was, I can't tell you how much joy it brought. We basically were going on the fumes of that all the way through the winter. Oh, that's that's just lovely to hear. I love that idea that the ICO is your orchestra. It's, it belongs to the audience. It's really... Don't tell Jerry. But it is. <laughs> it's, it, it is. I, I mean, Kilkenny, that, that experience, because people go to different things. They don't just say, I like classical music, so I'll go to the chamber music in the afternoon, or I, I like literature, so I'll go to the talks. And the, it is that thing of seeing artists work in different spaces in different contexts and that does give the Kilkenny audience a real ownership of ICO and I think that's the best compliment I could play both the audience and the orchestra. Thank you very much. I, I couldn't have written that better for you. <laughs> so the ICO concert this year, it's going to be streamed. Now, can you tell me something about this concert? And also, I know it's a collaboration, so can you tell me a little bit about that as well? 
It's a very interesting collaboration, but I suppose this this sort of, if anything, demonstrated the confidence and the kind of shared purpose and the shorthand ICO Kilkenny and the kind of people we work with has is how challenging this whole project was at the start, but how smoothly we're moving it forward. And it has had a sort of, I suppose, a little bit of serendipity um, that it was of interest to to both uh, ICO and Kilkenny. So it was, I mean, I'm a huge fan of traditional Irish music. Um, I've done a lot of work uh, with various artists. As you know, we have, a, a, ordinarily, we have a very strong traditional music collaborative series in Kilkenny and Marble City Sessions. And <clears throat> quite early in one of the lockdowns, Muran Nicaulif, who's a stunning, stunning singer and interpreter of traditional song, sang Roisin Dove Unaccompanied on the Shauna Work Show. And it, it literally, I, I literally couldn't move from the, I, I was washing up and I sat there at the kitchen sort of dead in my tracks with the rubber gloves on my hands. It just blew my head off. It just, it made the nation weep a little bit. It was so powerfully raw, that voice. And then Don O'Connor and her got in touch with me and were saying they had this idea of her voice being put through the orchestral palette in a way, or not her voice being put through the palette, but to see if it could work with an orchestral palette. And we talked about different things and I said, you really, we really need to talk to Jerry Keenan because <clears throat> the ICO are doing a lot of this kind of collaborative things or working with dance or working with film and and it all just kind of worked really really well they had already thought about the composers they wanted to talk to some of us had relationships with them already Jerry did in some cases I did in others and so uh, ICO and Kilkenny Arts Festival committed to commissioning these six composers Paul Campbell, Michael Keeney, Niamh Varian Barry, Linda Buckley, Sam Perkin and Cormac McCarthy who are all very different kinds of composers and arrangers but so we came together in the first instance to commission those uh, composers to work with Donal and Wern. And those first rehearsals a month ago in Limerick, I've been trading on those fumes for the last month because just wow. Um, and Wern is an extraordinary um, performer and she's also got an extraordinary aesthetic. There's not too many Shannon singers or traditional singers would even want to or should want to. Uh, take on something like this. But she's at this point in her career where I think it's really, really important to her to be able to step into a new space. And, you know, in Ireland, we are both Western art music Europeans and we have this wonderful indigenous tradition. And happily, we now live in a, in a generation or in an era where we're, we're almost post-genre because we can listen to jazz from any part of the world. We can listen to, you know, any music from any part of the world through the internet and so on and increase travel. So we have this dual citizenship. So why wouldn't we take this snapshot in time of these two art forms coming together with these particular artists and composers? So my, the thing I keep saying to people is we're not sort of proclaiming this is a a grand statement about this is what Shan knows should try to do more or this is what or orchestra. It's just a great snapshot in time of a particular combination of great artists, composers and a great orchestra. And if I say so myself, a great festival. <laughs> I think you can say that, Olga. I think you can. I hope it's not too long before we meet again in person. And I also hope you don't have to do too much washing up with your rubber gloves on in the future either. Yeah. No dishwasher where I live anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Olga. Good luck with the festival. Thank you, Matthew. See you soon. Bye bye.